This is already the most frightening virus outbreak that we have seen in the past several decades, and it appears that it is just getting started. A week ago, there were about 3,000 confirmed cases outside of China and now there are more than 10,000. 4,812 cases have been confirmed in South Korea, 2,036 cases have been confirmed in Italy, and 1,501 cases have been confirmed in Iran at this point. Of course by the time you actually read this article those numbers are likely to be significantly higher. It is like we are watching a really bad Hollywood disaster movie play out right in front of our eyes, and so far every effort to contain this virus has failed. On Monday, Dr. Anthony Fossey stunned many people when he told NBC News that COVID-19 has likely reached pandemic proportions. News of the additional deaths came after Dr. Anthony Fossey, the head of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, told NBC News on Monday that the disease had likely reached pandemic proportions as 100 cases were confirmed across the U.S. We're dealing with an evolving situation. We're dealing with clearly an emerging infectious disease that has now reached outbreak proportions and likely pandemic proportions, Dr. Fossey said. If you look at multiple definitions of what a pandemic is, multiple sustained transmissions of a highly infectious agent in multiple regions of the globe. Dr. Fossey is definitely not an alarmist, and for him to use the word pandemic is a major red flag. Last week a lot of people were pointing out that not a single American had died from this virus yet, but now six victims have died in the state of Washington alone. Four more people have died of the coronavirus in Washington state, raising the death toll in the state and the nation to six, health officials said Monday. Jeffrey Duckin, a health officer in King County and Seattle, said at a news conference Monday that five of the deaths were people from King County and one was from Snohomish County, north of Seattle. If you live in the Seattle area, you need to understand that you are in the middle of a crisis zone. As I discussed yesterday, it is likely that the virus has been circulating in that region for weeks, and each day the number of potential carriers will only get higher. At this point, local officials are specifically warning everyone to avoid crowded settings if possible. To increase your chances of staying healthy, avoid crowded settings if possible, King County Public Health said on Twitter. Especially if you are over 60, or have other chronic health conditions such as diabetes, heart disease, lung disease, or a weakened immune system. There's particular concern about the spread of the virus in nursing homes. One such facility, Life Care Center in Kirkland, Washington, said in a statement that one of its residents and one of its associates have been diagnosed with COVID-19. The center is banning visitors for now. And this doesn't mean that you will need to change your behavior for a few days or even a few weeks. At a minimum, if you live in the Seattle area you are going to want to avoid crowded settings for the next several months. Of course it is just a matter of time before other major cities are facing similar outbreaks. In recent days the number of states with confirmed cases has grown quite a bit larger. Arizona 1. California 20. Florida 2. Illinois 4. Massachusetts 1. New York 1. Oregon 3, Rhode Island 2, Washington State 18 includes 6 fatalities. Wisconsin 1. Unfortunately, this list probably only represents the very small tip of a very large iceberg. Up until just recently, the CDC was mandating that the only people that should be tested are those that have traveled to China or those that have had close contact with a known victim. By using such restrictive criteria, the number of Americans being tested was kept extremely low, and a lot of infected people slipped through the cracks. Now this virus has escaped containment, and authorities are telling us that community spread is inevitable all over the United States. Meanwhile, COVID-19 continues to sweep across much of the rest of the planet like wildfire. In Iran, the fact that a top advisor to Ayatollah Ali Khamenei just died from the virus made headlines all over the globe. An advisor to Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei has died of coronavirus, state media reported today. Mohammad Mirmohammadi, 71, died in hospital in Tehran as the pariah nation reels from a worsening outbreak that has left several senior officials in hospital. But despite the fact that the number of confirmed cases in Iran is escalating at an exponential rate, and despite the fact that dozens of Iranians have already died, many Iranians continue to engage in the practice of kissing and licking Shiite shrines throughout the country. 
Videos spreading on social media are showing Iranians kissing and licking Shiite shrines throughout the country as many call to close the shrines amid a severe coronavirus outbreak in the Islamic Republic. The epicenter of the outbreak in Iran, Qam, is a religious city home to several shrines. The shrines remain open as some reports place the death toll in Iran in the hundreds. Can you believe that? We live at a time when it seems like much of the world has gone nuts. Most people believe whatever they feel like believing, and most people do whatever they feel like doing. But there are always consequences for our actions, and I have a feeling that this virus is going to spread particularly rapidly in the Middle East. Here in the United States, it appears that this outbreak is far more extensive than we are being told. As the US starts to finally ramp up testing, it is inevitable that a lot more existing cases will be found. In fact, in just a little while I will be posting an article on End of the American Dream about an ER doctor in New York that is claiming that there is going to be thousands of confirmed cases inside this country by next week. I don't think that it is going to happen quite that rapidly, but it appears to be inevitable that the number of cases is going to be steadily rising. This is not a drill. This is an exceedingly dangerous virus that is killing people all over the planet, and we need to prepare for a scenario in which this crisis could extend for many months or even for several years.